All right, guys, hope you're well. So, we're gonna be trying the potluck beer. Now, technically, we've already done this video, though you haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah. You know when you make something and you're like, this could be really good or it could be so-so? This is one of those times where um, it's so good that uh, I, I just got lost in myself and drank loads of beer. So, what we're going to be doing today is uh, trying it again because we've got to thoroughly test how these things turn out. So if you haven't seen the part one and the part two videos of how we got here, I will stick the links at the top there so you can see them if you want. So, I've got a fresh ice cold bottle because beer has to be cold. I also have a fresh glass because... Um, I completely messed up the video uh, previously. So, first, it's a brown bottle. I mean, you know, you, count, you, you can tell it's a brown bottle, I'm pretty sure. And you can see light through it, and, and the light has got a purple hue to it. Now that's a little bit because the malt is really dark. And we added blueberries, oh yes. So, let's crack this open. I don't need to say is it carbonated or is it not because I already know from the last two attempts that this is carbonated. So point it away from your face because you never want it at your face. And uh, if you're in a room full of people you don't like, point it at them because it's a win-win. Let's crack she open. Oh, that is such a satisfying noise. And instantly you have that sort of multi Beery beautifulness. Also has some of those citra edges. And a little bit fruity. Oh yes. So, cheeky pint glass, cheeky beer. Oh, come on baby. So I'm gonna stop it so you can hopefully see this. It is a pretty dark beer, like a porter, because porter and stout are kind of pretty much the same, uh, one or two small differences. It has a purple hue to it, it is dark. The carbonation is not excessive. I'm not a great fan of high carbonation. If you decide to make this and you like a lot of carbonation, just add more, use a beer calculator, a priming calculator. You can find them on the interwebs. So uh, let's pour this beauty out. Now because I don't highly carbonate it, I can do all sorts with it. So just, just a little bit, there we go, and I'm going to leave the last little bit because I don't want the yeast. I'm not a great fan of the yeasty bottom. If that's your thing, go for it. So <laughs> instantly, this looks like a pint of porter, almost stout-like. It is clearer than a stout and it, it just it looks so good. It has glass appeal. I mean, it is in an old tribute glass, so I'm paying homage to tribute. Got to where you can. And oh, it just looks so good. And I am looking forward to every mouthful. I do this for you, not, not for me. So I can smell those malts. I can smell the blueberries. And I can also smell the dry hops. Oh, lovely. It smells good. Those citra notes mixed with the blueberries is a fantastic combination. It is making my mouth salivate because I've already tried this. Not bad. Cheers. Mm. That is good. It's, it's still good. So it's got, because we use eating milk, it is a bit hit and miss, but it is a dark malt. It has those malty edges to it. But because beer doesn't finish dry, I mean, it's, it's never been very rarely, because there are some exceptions, finish at 990. They always finish about 1.005, you know, something like that. And that's cool. But this, because it's a porter style, which is a little bit strange, if you will, it finished at a quite high gravity at uh, 1.020, somewhere around that, uh, without checking. Now that means that 
the blueberries that we added in here because blueberries are kind of they're tart they're not uh, they're not the sweetest fruits in the world they're not the driest either but they're not they're not a strawberry let's face it they're not a strawberry they're not a really ripe banana they're kind of tart so the sugars that are left over in this beer really bring out those blueberry flavors but not to the point where it's overpowering because uh, there is a line if, if, you know, beer, there's a line where you don't want to cross this naturally works beautifully with blueberries i kind of had a feeling that it kind of would but it I, I made it up so i'm really happy when a plan comes together and this is a good plan cheers that is silky silky and smooth so because it had a higher final gravity there are infermentable sugars and also still unfermented or unconverted carbohydrates because um, well eating malts are not the same as brewing malts i mean they're technically the same thing but they're different because brewing malts are a lot more strict and you get lots of different types whereas an eating malt is just you know here here's your malt eat it that's that's how it goes now let's talk about these hops because uh, i actually got a question in well not question i got told told now, that's how it went in the last video that they would have uh, boiled the hops because hops when you dry hop it only adds aroma not true <laughs> i can officially say that's not true now if i had boiled hops there would be a lot of bittering in here now dry hopping only gives you about 40 percent of the you know by weight bittering because um, well, you're not boiling the hell out of them so this has less bittering but there is still bittering in here and it is just enough because too much bittering you would overpower the blueberry notes you're not getting those oh, citrus notes <laughs> no. uh, this is what happens when you have a few beers and a bacon sandwich i mean that's uh yeah, that's what happens so i apologize but this is far too good not to drink. Mm. Those citra, I mean, the, the kind of grapefruity, kind of lemony, lime, I mean, all of those citra notes, or citrus notes, I should say, really complement those blueberries. And then you've got the bittering after, so your mouth is alive with flavor. It's one of the things I like about beer i mean especially homemade beer not so much commercial beer they're usually very one-dimensional and usually very very bitter i'm not a fan of the bitter how dare you interrupt me it's that part of the day where i've got to have a bit of a vape and i'm going to do that that is tasty too since some of you were asking, uh, were interested or liked what I was, uh, what I was vaping, because I occasionally say what I'm vaping, currently vaping lemon tart. Not bad. Hi VG, um, works well on this thing. Anyway, back to what we were talking about. So, tasty beer. It's just good. It's just good, wholesome fun for all the plus 18 family. Now, if you're brewing your own beers, you're going to have a different idea. I mean, if you were told to come up with your own recipe, um, you're gonna do things differently than I would. Doesn't make it wrong, just makes it different. Nothing wrong with being different. I like my dry hopping, I don't like my boiling. And uh, yeah, I'm never gonna change my mind on that because I like the less bittering i like the more aromas the more flavor um i just like how it turned out now it is a fantastic beer it works i didn't know it was gonna work but it does work it looks good too so we're gonna be doing some other things with this eating malt but i can officially say that this is a porter i mean it tastes like a porter it looks like a porter therefore it must be a porter so uh 
There we go. We now know what a potluck beer, as in the eating malt, should turn out like if you were going to use it. Uh, I don't know about other brands, but definitely Reynard's. It is, uh, turns into a dark, multi porter like beer. And when you add the blueberry and the hops, it really tasty too. It's so good. So I'm going to stop the video there, guys, because, uh, well, I'm going to drink this pint, edit the video, and uh, just probably have another one, or possibly two. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones, and, well, subscribe if you feel like it. You know, do all of that stuff. Comment below. Like. And uh, if you have any ideas about some eating malts, I want to hear. I want to hear it. Put it in the comments below. So, uh, carry on homebrewing, guys. See you later.